So we're going to be talking about the topic encryption. So this topic is in chapter one. But just a recap, encryption is the scrambling of information so that it becomes unreadable to a third party which doesn't have access to the decryption key. So this topic was discussed in IGCSE and it is here again in AS. But just let me know if you have any questions about what you see in this video. So what is encryption? It's a specific type of encoding. It is when data is scrambled so that it cannot be understood. The purpose is to make data difficult or impossible to read if accessed by an unauthorized user. Data can be encrypted when stored on a hard disk or when being sent across a network. And decryption is the only way to legitimately access the encrypted data. So we're going to see some examples of coding information in the slides to come. But the idea is to take information or a message that you send into someone else to make that information unreadable to anyone that can intercept that message, like a hacker, for example. But when that message reaches the person whom you have sent it to, the message will become decrypted and that person can then read what that message is. So if you're sending the text hello to someone, it might scramble it up, for example, to one, two, three, something like that. This is just a very basic example. But then when it reaches the person whom you're sending hello to, that one, two, three will then decrypt and will become hello so that person can read that information. What is the cipher? It is a secret way of writing, in other words, a code. They are used to convert a message into an encrypted message. So we're going to have a look at an example here. So your textbook talks about a method known as a shift cipher. Uh, many know it as the Caesar shift. So that is, we encode our message by shifting up the alphabet by a number of spaces. So this is just a very basic example of making a encrypted uh, message. So let's assume that our encrypted code would be the original letters shifted by one. So that is A becomes B, B becomes C, etc. So we have an example over here. If we're sending the message hello to someone, but we want to encrypt this message, and we're using the, the idea that is presented here, that each of our original letters is shifted up by one. So after H comes I, after E comes F, after L is M, and after O is P. So hello, the encrypted code of hello would then become IFMMP. So when a hacker or someone, for example, intercepts this message, uh, looks and like doesn't mean anything, but when it reaches the person who it's been sent to, then it will become hello. Or if they know the idea that it was shifted up by one, they know to just shift these letters back one, so I to H, to F to E, etc. So Caesar shift is an example from your textbook. What is symmetric encryption? Okay, so there are two types of encryption that your book is going to focus on, symmetric and asymmetric. So this is the oldest method of encryption. So both the sender and recipient possess the secret encryption and decryption key in this method. The secret key must be sent to the recipient. So the person sending the message, they will send the recipient the secret key to decrypt the message. So this could be done at a separate time, but must be done by post or over the internet. It could be intercepted. So for example, they might have a message over here. Hi there, my name is John and I live in etc. etc. That's the original data. So what's going to happen is the symmetric key is going to encrypt this message so that it becomes not meaningful. And as you can see over here, this is like an example of scrambled data. But once it reaches the recipient, the symmetric key is then going to decrypt this message into the original message. Hi there, my name is John, etc. So this is a basic example of how symmetric encryption works. So what is asymmetric encryption? So this is also known as public key cryptography. It overcomes the problem of keys being intercepted by using pairs of keys. So when the sender sends the encryption key or decryption key to the recipient, there is a chance that a hacker can get hold of that key and then 
be able to read the secret message that you have sent. A public key is available to anybody wanting to send data and a private key only known to the recipient. The key is the algorithm needed to encrypt and decrypt the data. So for example, we have Bob and we have Alice. So for example, Bob wants to send a message, hello Alice, to Alice. So Alice has two keys. She has her own private key and she has a public key. So the public key is known to everyone, pretty much. Anyone can get hold of the public key. So what's going to happen is Bob is going to use this public key of Alice to encrypt the message hello Alice into something unreadable. And then he's going to send this message to Alice, but the only key that can decrypt this message, which has been encrypted by Alice's public key, would be Alice's private key. So these two keys are different, but only the private key of Alice, of which only she would know, only her key can decrypt this message. Uh, so it will decrypt to hello Alice. So that's just a rough idea of how asymmetric encryption can work. So what is needed in order to find a public key? So generally, so digital certificates are required which identify the user or server and provide the public key. So digital certificates, they are unique to each user or server. And a digital certificate usually includes the following information, the organization name, user's email address, a user's country, and the user's public key. So the public key is known from the digital certificate. Okay, cool. Please let me know if you have any questions, if those are right.